Uh, my name is Charlie Pignon, and I've been associated with the Sinatra and the Sinatra family for over 30 years, since 1984. I started uh, running his fan club in 1984, and that eventually led into a full-time job and um, traveled the world and the last decade that Frank worked on the road with him. Now we're here at the Palladium. We've done a show before. It's a multimedia show that we originally did in Radio City and then we brought to the Palladium in 2006 and then it toured and now being that this year 2015 in December is Frank's 100th birthday that we're going to reopen the show. It's revamped so there's a new creative team and um, it, we're looking forward to opening it at the Palladium. The intent that we had for the show is for people that were able to see Frank or old enough who were able to witness and see Frank in concert. We're hoping this brings back some wonderful memories. And for the people that never got to see Frank in concert live, this is really the closest you're ever going to get. This is the experience you'll see because it is Frank. It's his voice. We're using the orchestrations. We're using footage um, from the Sinatra family and Frank Sinatra Enterprises vaults. A lot of it's never been seen before. And um, I think that people, as I said, if they've never seen Frank, this will give them a little flavor of what it was like to, to witness him. Certainly London was one of his favorite cities. I think outside of New York and Las Vegas, uh, I know for a fact that in the European cities, London is the place he most played. What's really great about opening the show here in London is we're opening on July 10th. And in 1950, on July 10th, that was the first Frank gave his first concert here at the London Palladium, so it's pretty historic. Yeah, you know what? The catalog of Frank Sinatra is so vast and expansive that I, and the moods of the songs. There are happy songs like Come Fly With Me or You Make Me Feel So Young or New York, New York, and then there are what he would call a saloon song like Angel Eyes or One For My Baby, so there's a, the catalog is so huge. Really depends on my mood of what my favorite song is. Frank, I think, recorded about 1,300 songs over his career, and um, except for a handful, I enjoy most of them. The feeling of seeing Frank in concert was nothing like I've ever witnessed before or since. I've seen a lot of acts, and top acts too. There was just some, Frank was so ingrained his music part of the 20th century that it, the last decade when he was working, people were just happy to see him. I mean, they grew up with his music, their families grew up with his music, and it was such a touchstone for a lot of people that to actually come and see him and be in the same room with the man and hear that music uh, was just a wonderful experience. I mean, it was multi-generational. You'd see families with their children, you'd see grandparents with their grandchildren, and all generations. Uh, we, you know, with Frank, we like to say there's no generation gaps. And the music, it, that was quality music. I mean, even when Frank was working in the early 90s, near the end, um, he was one of the last people that was going out and working with a large orchestra. Because usually when you see a rock act or a, an act, even if they're playing in an arena, it could be four people, it could be eight. Very rarely do you see the, the large orchestra, and we're lucky in this production that we'll have the luxury of 24 musicians. Besides the storied music career, uh, Frank, a lot of people have to remember, was a great actor. He won three Academy Awards. He won an Academy Award for his performance in From Here to Eternity. But he made 60 films and was a very successful actor. And anybody today that had that type of career would be known as a film superstar. So when you put it in perspective that this man, uh, starting in the 40s with radio and then into television, the albums, the recordings, the films, the live appearances, the concert, the nightclubs, it's staggering the amount of work he did, but it's also amazing how popular he was able to stay. And I think that was because of the quality of his work. Because nowadays, you get people that are in the music business and they make a couple movies, but they're not movie superstars. Frank was a genuine superstar in the movies. I think that also helped him internationally because those movies played a lot overseas and people saw that. And uh, yeah, it's just the amount of work is staggering. And, more important is the quality, it's not the quantity, but the quality is amazing. The first time I saw Frank live was in the early 80s. I mean, I was from upstate New York, and Frank, uh, I was a New York Yankee fan, and in 1980, Frank had recorded New York, New York, and the Yankees adopted that as their theme song. They would play that at every game. They used to play it when they won, they'd play Frank's version. When they lost, they'd play Liza Minnelli's version. 
over the years, it's morphed into Frank being always played there, just like in Times Square now, New Year's Eve, they play Frank. I grew up in an Italian family and that music was always played and I don't think I really had the appreciation of it until I went and saw him live. And when I saw him live, what I did was immediately go back into my parents' record collection and started going through the records and listening to the albums. And I would tell people, it, it was amazing. I was there at the end of the career, the last decade of his career. He had also was just doing a new album called LA Is My Lady with Quincy Jones. But the artistry and the level of perfection and the level of music was something even I recognized at an early age that was beyond above anything I had seen. And I'm not putting down rock, I'm not putting down other types of music. But when you see a 38-piece orchestra play an arrangement like I've Got You Under My Skin or Come Fly With Me or something like Moonlight in Vermont, and everybody in the orchestra is playing and these are quality arrangements and you've got the, num you know, the best singer in the world, I don't know how you can't not be a fan. And don't tell your mama. <laughs>